morning church. It's Friday morning. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter number 19. As we discuss the issue of marriage and divorce and remarriage, the question is, is it okay to get a divorce? If one gets a divorce, can they remarry? What's quite plain in Malachi chapter 2, when God talks about the issue of divorce uh, with the Hebrews, he says, I hate divorce. Now, I guess reasons for that because divorce tends to create conflict within the families and not just the, the man and woman who are getting the divorce, but their families. It creates some problems with the kids. It covers, it says, the whole family uh, with, with violence. <clears throat> and so God does not want us to get a divorce. Therefore, he tells us that a man is to leave his father and his mother. They're to come together in a covenant marriage before God, get married, they're wedded together, they become one flesh, that is, they wait till after the ceremony, and they consummate the marriage, and they become one flesh. What God joins together, man is not to put asunder. So God has given us the original pattern of one man, one woman, married for one lifetime. And so God's not changed that. We come to the New Testament, and here's what Jesus says. Now, verse number 3 of chapter 19, the uh, Pharisees come to Jesus and they ask this question. They really were testing him, if you will. And they said, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? Now, they won't argue the point because they probably know what Jesus is going to say. They're going to argue one way or another. And Jesus is going to say, No. You're not to get a divorce for any reason except for uh, fornication or for sexual immorality. And then they're going to argue, well, why didn't, didn't Moses say that we could? And Jesus will answer that. But listen to what Jesus says. This comes from Jesus. This is not Old Testament. This is New Testament. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them in the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this reason a man shall leave his father's mother and be joined to his wife, and the Lord and the two then shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. So he goes back back to number one, the very beginning of marriage and when it was initiated and who initiated it, God. They said, this is the pattern. That's not changed. But also we need to note that his authority was the word of God. This is what, have you not read? This is what the scripture says. This is, this is the word of God. This is what God has said about marriage. Verse seven. <clears throat> then they said to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? Now I want you to know how Jesus answered that. He says, because... Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to divorce. But notice they said, why did Moses command for there to be divorces then? Moses never commanded. He says, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permitted for divorce. God allowed Moses to write down, and this was to keep women out of very difficult circumstances. Because women were oftentimes abused in those circumstances. Oftentimes, their husbands... Uh, the only way they could get out of the marriage was to kill their wife because you had to be married until your wife died and uh, they would trump up some charge. So it was always to try to protect the women that he allowed for divorce. And he knew the human heart to be what it was. He allowed for it. He permitted it. He did not command it, but it was not so, he said, from the beginning. That's not what the intent was. But God allowed because of sinful human heart for divorce. But he says, goes ahead and says, uh, in, at the end of that, but from the beginning it was not so, verse 9, and I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. So Jesus said, Here, here's the way it is, guys. You're supposed to stay together. That's what God's intent. It goes all the way back to the very beginning of things. God's word is very clear on that. Moses allowed for divorce because of sin. And by the way, he says it's not changed. 
I tell you that if a man divorces his wife for any reason whatsoever, just he just decides he doesn't want to be with her or she leaves the marriage or whatever reason, and goes to marry another, that's going to be uh, a violation of the covenant. He's committing adultery or she's committing adultery. Except for this, he says, if there's been uh, sexual immorality. Now, we could debate on what all that means, but basically, when <clears throat> one of the couple commits a sexual sin after marriage, after they've entered into this covenant relationship, then the other one is free to leave because adultery has already happened and to remarry. Now, Paul takes a little farther in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and says to <clears throat> believers, if your husband or your wife leaves you because you're a believer and they're an unbeliever and they don't want to be married to you any longer and they go off, then you're free to divorce. Now, he doesn't speak about remarriage, but we assume because the other person is going off to start a new relation with someone else, they're going to enter into an adulterous relationship that the person is free to remarry. But in that situation, he says, it's better, though, for you to remain single. See if that's going to work first. But if it doesn't, if you feel like you really need to be married, then, then uh, it's better to marry than to burn. So <clears throat> divorce is a very serious subject. God does not hate divorcees. He does not hate those who have had a divorce forced upon them, nor does he hate those who commit adultery and get into uh, uh, a relationship where they lose their spouse uh, through a divorce. He forgives those things, but at the same time, that's not his proper or his, his uh, purpose for marriage, and therefore we ought not to do that. It is a sin when someone gets a divorce if it's not for the reasons that we just described. But we can remarry. God will restore. But there's going to be complications in the midst of that. All right? Well, let's pray together. Father, we thank you again that you have given us clarity. We know that this is an epidemic in our society. And Father, we know it brings about a great deal of struggle and a great deal of pain. We pray, Father, for those who have gone through divorce that you'll strengthen them, you'll encourage them, you'll forgive in those situations where they need to be forgiven, that, Father, you'll restore. In Jesus' name, amen.